1903 machine on the launching track at Big Kill Devil Hill, prior to the December 14th trial. Four men from the Kill Devil Hill's life-saving station helped move it from the shed to the hill, accompanied by two small boys and a dog. Photo taken the 14th of December 1903 by the Wright brothers. The U.S. Life Saving Service keeper Captain Jesse Ward and serve men of the Kill Devil Hills Life Saving Station assisted the Wright brothers during their flight experiments at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. A man who later became a keeper with the U.S. Lighthouse Service first recommended the area as a perfect place for the two brothers to experiment with powered flight. Their actions established a connection between the Coast Guard and the very origins of powered flight. U.S. Coast Guard's first aviation group. The class of 1916 became the first Coast Guard aviators. They are shown at the Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida, with their crewmen at the time of graduation. Of the 18 pictured, nine remained in the Coast Guard, three became rear admirals, one a vice admiral, another won the Congressional Medal for a historical contribution to aviation. Left to right, C.T. Thrun, Master at Arms, later a warrant officer who was killed while flying at Cape May, New Jersey, in January, 1935, J.F. Powers, Oiler First Class, who later left the service, George Ott, Ship's Rider, who later left the service, C. Griffin, Master at Arms, who later left the service, John Wicks, Serve Man, Third Lieutenant Robert Donahue, who became Rear Admiral, was Chief, Air Sea Rescue Officer, Chief, Personnel Officer, at Headquarters, Retired 1, 1946, Died April 4, 1964, Second Lieutenant C. E. Sugden, who retired a Captain on August 1, 1946, Second Lieutenant E. E. Coffin, who retired a Rear Admiral on April 1, 1950, First Lieutenant S. V. Parker, who retired as Vice Admiral September 1, 1947, Second Lieutenant P. B. Eaton, who became Rear Admiral, and Assistant Engineer-in-Chief at Headquarters, retired August 31, 1946, died May 18, 1958. Third Lieutenant E. F. Stone, designated Coast Guard Aviator No. 1 who in 1919 made history as pilot of the Navy seaplane NC-4 that made the first transatlantic crossing, was a commander when he died May 20, 1936. Aura Young, serve man, who later left the service. W. R. Malu, coxswain, who later left the service. J. Myers, serve man, who later left the service. Jamie Dusky, assistant master at arms, who later left the service. W. S. Anderson, serve man, who retired as a lieutenant commander, November 1, 1946. L. M. Malka, signal quartermaster, later became a lieutenant. Stone received the Congressional Medal May 23, 1930 for extraordinary achievement in making the first successful transatlantic flight. On the 1st of April 1916, at the invitation of the U.S. Navy, 2nd Lieutenant Charles E. Sugden and 3rd Lieutenant Elmer F. Stone received their orders to attend aviation training at Pensacola Naval Air Station. Coast Guard Aviation claims that day is its official birthday. U.S. Coast Guard's first aviation photo dated the 28th of April 1919, a Curtis MF flying boat on a seaplane ramp. All of the early aircraft flown by the Coast Guard were acquired, usually borrowed, from the Navy. Crew of the NC-4, Anacostia, the 28th of May 1919. Left to right, Eugene Rhodes, Lieutenant Junior Grade Breeze, Lieutenant Junior Grade Walter Hunton, Lieutenant Elmer Stone, USCG, Lieutenant Commander A.C. Reed, 
commanding officer. Elmer Stone piloted the NC-4 on her historic flight across the Atlantic. He continued working with the Navy for the next decade, with the approval of the Treasury Department, where he helped create carrier aviation in the Coast Guard Sister Sea Service. Coast Guard Aviation Personnel Attached to the Coast Guard Aviation Station at Moorhead City, North Carolina. 8121. The officer in the center of the photograph is William Wishar. He commanded the short lived air station at Moorhead City. The seaplane the men are standing in front of is a Curtis HS2L borrowed from the Navy. Captain Wishar later penned a first person account of these very early days of Coast Guard aviation. The editor of his article, as it was posted online, noted, Captain William P. Wishar's recollections provide a wonderful glimpse into the very early years of Coast Guard aviation, the trials of flying open cockpit, fabric and wire biplane flying boats, navigating over open water with only a few instruments to guide you, experimenting with flying at night, literally by the seat of your pants, and attempting to set up and operate an air station with practically no funding which necessitated borrowing a tent from the Army, begging the Navy for leftover aircraft, and scrounging for spare parts, tools, and personnel. Captain Wishar's recollections illustrate the importance of the initiative and courage of a few Coast Guardsmen who successfully established a permanent aviation program for the Coast Guard. These few men recognized the importance of what aviation could do for the Coast Guard and at the risk of taking a dead-end career path they forged ahead to make their vision a reality. Without their courage and foresight, the role aviation played in the development of the service in the last century would have been altered significantly. Shortly after completing flight training Captain Wishar commanded the 1st Coast Guard Air Station at Moorhead City, North Carolina. Handwritten on the back of the photo, Pensacola Naval Air Station. 1920, training in an early version of a cockpit simulator, Wishar is on the far right. These two early Coast Guard aviators, pictured together in the flying gear on May 5, 1927, established the first successful U.S. Coast Guard air unit on Ten Pound Island, Gloucester, Mass. In 1925, using one Vought seaplane borrowed from the Navy. From left, our Commander Carl C. Von Paulsen, who commanded Coast Guard Base 7, Gloucester, and the attached air unit, January 1925 to May 1928, and Ensign Leonard M. Malka, who acted as pilot and mechanic. Commander Von Paulsen and Ensign Malka alternated on aerial patrols, investigating smugglers operating along the North Atlantic coast. They proved that the aircraft was an effective means of detection and law enforcement work. They also helped in a series of radio communication experiments between aircraft and flight, between aircraft and ships, and between aircraft and ground stations. Von Paulsen was the 1913 graduate of the Revenue Cutter School of Instruction and earned his wings in 1920. He retired in 1945 after more than 30 years distinguished service on the sea and in the air. Ensign Melka was one of the first Coast Guard graduates of flight training at Pensacola in 1917. He died in 1936 from injuries sustained in a 1929 Coast Guard aircraft accident. Tuning up number 3 plane, Loning Amphibian, Gloucester, Mass. March 8, 1929. In 1926 the Coast Guard purchased three loaning amphibians for $52,000. These were the first aircraft ever purchased by the Coast Guard. Machine gun and rung mount ready for action, showing the magazine and shell catcher in place. Gloucester, Mass, 3829. 
The Coast Guard experimented with arming loaning OL5s during Prohibition but the experiment proved to be impractical and was abandoned. The Coast Guard did not arm its aircraft again during peacetime until it developed the Hit-Ron Squadron in the late 1990s. Another image of the armed OL-5, in Gloucester, Mass, 1929. Altair being christened at General Aviation Manufacturing Corporation, Dundalk, Maryland. Miss Aline Beverly Jocker, daughter of Commander and Mrs. Lloyd T. Jocker, USCG, and Rear Admiral Harriet U. Hamlet, Commandant of the U.S. Coast Guard. The Coast Guard, following a similar practice as the Navy, christened and commissioned its flying boats. The PJ's landing gear was removable. The five PJs were the first aircraft designed and built specifically for Coast Guard service. They were built by General Aviation, formerly known as Fokker Aircraft Corporation of America. The late Rear Admiral Norman G. Hall, USCG, pioneer in U.S. Coast Guard aviation, shown here as a commander, watches a crew working on a PJ-1 Fokker seaplane at the water's edge at the Naval Air Station, Norfolk, Virginia. In 1932, the Fokker PJs were known by Coast Guard aviators of the time as FLBs for flying lifeboats. Coast Guard plane, Antares, at steamer Samuel Q. Brown, for stretcher case. The Coast Guard PJs and their air crews pioneered this kind of SAR case, flying far over the horizon, landing at sea near a merchant vessel, recovering the victim patient, taking off at sea and returning to base. In this instance two merchant crewmen sustained serious burns and were evacuated by Antares and its crew 50 miles off the Delaware Capes in early 1933. Another image of Coast Guard plane, Antares, at steamer Samuel Q. Brown, for stretcher case. A welcome from the air. Coast Guard planes from the Coast Guard Air Station Miami, Florida, greeting the new 165-foot patrol boat Pandora upon her arrival at that port to take station. From top to bottom are flying boat Akamar, Amphibian Sirius, and flying boat Archerus. Date, December 6, 1934. Coast Guard Airmen Honored for Rescue. Miami made quite a to-do over these medal winners. Five members of the United States Coast Guard received Treasury Department Life Saving Medals of Honor, the government's highest peacetime award, at ceremonies pictured above. Governor Dave Schultz presented the medals in the presence of Captain C.F. Howell, USCG and Mary G. Sewell. Left to right, Thomas S. McKenzie, radio operator, William D. Pinkston, aviation machinist mate first class, James R. Orndorff chief aviation machinist mate, Lieutenant William L. Foley and Lieutenant Commander Carl C. Von Paulson USCG, all receiving the award. The award was for their daring rescue off Vero Beach, Florida, on the 1st of January 1933 of a young man who had been swept to sea in an open skiff during a storm to over 30 miles off the coast. The aircraft, a Miami-based Fokker PJ-1 flying boat named Archers, cracked up with a damaged wing during their landing at sea. Von Paulson then taxied miles through the rough seas back to shore in the dead of night. taking off an injured man from a Coast Guard seaplane. This man was taken off a merchant liner at sea and rushed to shore by the Coast Guard for immediate medical treatment. Stretcher Case, Salem Air Station
U.S. Coast Guard Air Station Cape May, New Jersey, 1934. The Coast Guard commissioned Air Station Cape May on the 29th of October 1926. General Musser at Coast Guard Air Station, Miami, Florida, the 31st of January 1935. The Coast Guard commissioned Air Station Miami in June of 1932 at Dinner Key, Florida, next to Pan Am's Miami Seaplane Base. Handwritten on back of photo, formation, Bill Clemmer was presented with a silver life-saving medal for his work after last year's Labor Day hurricane. Frank Erickson III from left, Miami, Florida, probably 1936. Award ceremony at Air Station Miami, circa 1936. Note the two Douglas R.T. Dolphin amphibians. A mural was commissioned inside the officers and CPO mass at Sector St. Petersburg, formerly Air Station St. Petersburg. This building was constructed in the 1937-38 time frame and the interior of the officers' mess was painted by a local artist, George Snow Hill, under the Works Progress Administration's Federal Art Program. Each wall of the mess depicted a historic event in Coast Guard history or one of the services many missions conducted in the 1930s, including aircraft operations such as that depicted here. Air Station St. Petersburg was commissioned on the 1st of March 1935. Photo and information courtesy of the Ancient Order of the Pterodactyls. Coast Guard Planes over St. Petersburg, Florida, CG Air Station, 1937. Coast Guard plane Douglas escorting the von Hindenburg to a landing at Lakehurst, New Jersey. This photo shows DLZ 129 Hindenburg on its inaugural flight between Friedrichshafen and Lakehurst. Depicted in the photo is Coast Guard RD Speaker. The Coast Guard magazine published a cropped version of this exact photo and included the following information in its caption. A fleet of Coast Guard amphibians took off from Floyd Bennett Field, Brooklyn, New York, to locate and escort the Von Hindenburg to Lake Hurston to enforce the Special Department of Commerce regulations requiring all private and commercial planes to keep clear. The Adhira, piloted by Lt. William Schisler, with Calvin H. Innes Chief Radio Man, L.C. Smith Aviation Machinist Mate First Class, sighted a Zeppelin and escorted her to Lake Hurst, also accompanied by Amphibian Spica, Lt. Fahey, J. E. Calker Radio Electrician, Lonnie Bridges Aviation Chief Machinist Mate, from Cape May Air Station, Amphibian Capella, Lt. Lyons, A.T. Cook Aviation Machinist Mate First Class, Led Be Eater Radio Man First Class, and Joseph, Aviation Machinist Mate Third Class. While arriving at Naval Air Station Lakehurst on the 6th of May 1937, the Hindenburg exploded and crashed. Its destruction was famously caught on film. A Coast Guard Douglas R.D. Dolphin in New York. Scan provided courtesy of Van R. Field. A Coast Guard Douglas R.D. Dolphin. Scan provided courtesy of Van R. Field. Lieutenant Richard L. Burke, a well-known pre-war Coast Guard aviator and aviation pioneer, stands near a Grumman JF-2. Lieutenant Richard L. Burke poses in front of the Coast Guard's Northrop RT-1 Delta. The service acquired the VIP transport aircraft in 1935 and Burke became Secretary of the Treasury Henry Morgenthau's favored pilot. Burke was credited with saving the life of the Secretary on one occasion. 
Secretary Morgenthau's official Lockheed plane, powered by right whirlwind engines, forms an appropriate background for Lt. Richard Burke, USCG, the Secretary, M.Y. Gordon, Vice President of the Wright Plant, and Frank LeMann, President of the Caldwell Wright Airport, Morgenthau, an aviation enthusiast and supporter, consolidated all department aviation activities within the Coast Guard in 1934. The Coast Guard acquired this particular Lockheed XR-30-1 Electra by trading a brand new Grumman JF-2 duck to the Marine Corps on the 26th of November 1935. Image scanned from the Coast Guard magazine. Air Station San Diego, circa 1938. The Coast Guard commissioned the station in April of 1937. A Waco J2W1 being hoisted on board the 327-foot cutter Spencer, circa 1937. The 327s were initially designed to operate with float planes, although in practice such operations proved to be impractical. Nevertheless the experiment led to the successful use of aircraft aboard a few of the cutters assigned to the Greenland Patrol. A Waco J2W1 secured to the quarter deck of the Spencer off Cordova, Alaska, in February, 1938. Rewarded for Courage. Washington, D.C., May 12th. Lieutenant C.B. Olson, Wright, United States Coast Guard, receiving from Secretary of the Treasury Morgenthau the Distinguished Flying Cross, the first to be awarded to a Coast Guard aviator. Lieutenant Olson was awarded the cross in recognition of a flight in a storm and darkness he made some 300 miles to sea from the Miami, Florida Air Station, to an Army transport and returning safely with an Army officer in desperate need of an operation. The flight was made in June 1935. On the left is Rear Admiral R. R. Weishi, Commandant of the Coast Guard. Washington, D.C., October 14, 1938. Coast Guard Flyer gets Distinguished Flying Cross. In recognition of a flight made 130 miles to sea through fog and rain to rescue a severely injured seaman, whose life was saved by prompt hospitalization. Lieutenant R. L. Burke, Coast Guard Aviator, was today presented with the Distinguished Flying Cross by Secretary of Treasury Morgenthau. In the photograph, left to right, Rear Admiral R. R. Weishi, Commandant of the Coast Guard, Lieutenant Burke, Secretary Morgenthau, and Stephen Gibbons, Assistant Secretary of Treasury in charge of the Coast Guard. The V-115 transferred to St. Petersburg. Off for Florida. Transferred to the Florida base, the V-115 was flown out of Salem December 11, 1938, by the picked crew above. Stops were made at Cape May, New Jersey, Charleston, South Carolina, and Miami, Florida. General Musser at the St. Petersburg, Florida Coast Guard Air Station. Photo dated the 14th of March, 1938. Hall PH-2, the largest pre-war flying boat in the Coast Guard's inventory. They also saw service during World War II. Launched the Ready Goose. 1940, Air Station Elizabeth City. The Coast Guard commissioned Air Station Elizabeth City on the 15th of August 1940. Lieutenant Commander S.C. Lindholm commands this cloud festoon station which has come to be one of the scenic spots in the state of Mississippi. It was an illustration for an article entitled, Biloxi Air Station. On the shores of the Gulf of Mexico bosks one of the Coast Guard's ten air stations close to the heart of the Deep South, written by Chief Boats Wayne Mate Walter F. Roque. 
The Coast Guard commissioned air station Biloxi on the 5th of December 1935. The Coast Guard magazine popularized all aspects of Coast Guard aviation in virtually every issue it ran from its founding in 1927 until the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, an effort well supported by the uniformed members of the Coast Guard aviation program, the Commandant Rear Admiral Russell R. Weishi, and the Secretary of the Treasury Henry Morgenthau.